Hey guys, Magnetico here, and welcome to the series of videos where we take video game systems, we clean them up, repair them if need be, and sometimes we even mod them. And today, we're going to be taking a look back at the Nintendo 64 that we cleaned up last time, and we're going to be installing the RGB mod into it. Now, what this mod does is that it actually allows us to use other cables than the composite cable that it came with. Originally, the N64 wasn't capable of doing that, but with this chip, we can use a component cable or RGB SCART to get much cleaner pictures out of our system. If you were to go on eBay, you can go ahead and look up RGB mod N64 and you'll find a series of chips that you can purchase. Uh, doing some of the research, I actually found that some of these were great and then some of them didn't work so great. But the one I recommend the most is going to be the one from Voltar. You can actually purchase one from Voltar shop and I'll go ahead and leave the link in the description below. You can buy for about 30 to $35. Not only that, he even has a service where you can send in your N64, they'll do the mod for you and then return it back to you for a little bit of a premium fee. Not only that, but Voltar on his YouTube channel actually has one of the best videos for installing this particular mod. He has the equipment to really zoom in into those small parts and show you guys exactly how to do it. Now, as far as my video goes, I'm going to show you some of the liberties I took with that particular mod. I'm not going to go super in depth like he does, but more importantly, I am going to do a comparison section where we compare N64 games in composite and other ones in SCART. So you guys can see the difference to see if this mod is even worth it for you. Now, before we get started, I wanted to get something out of the way. If you guys remember from my previous video, which was disassembling and cleaning up this little system, I did mention that it does matter which version of the N64 you have. I wanted to set you guys up for success from the very first video, getting you the right version of the N64 and then mentioning which mod I was moving on to. So that way you guys can follow along if you guys wanted to with these series of N64 tutorials. But if you guys didn't watch it, I'll give you guys the short version. Basically, it matters what the serial number on your N64 is. If you guys are looking at your N64 serial number and you guys are seeing NS1 for the North American version, you guys can follow along with this mod. However, if you're looking at NS2 or some higher number, those are newer versions of the N64 and those will not work with this mod. Same thing with the Japanese version. You're looking at NUJ1, that one will work. But if you're looking at NUJ2 or higher, unfortunately, those will not work with this mod. And you guys will actually have to opt for what is called an advanced mod, which requires a little bit more soldering skill. But some of the benefits of that particular mod is that it does have a menu where you can add scan lines or even upscale. Since I'm using a Retro Team 5X, those are not particular features that I'm looking for myself. So I opted to go out shopping for the NS1 version or NUJ1 version for my particular tutorials. Either way, make sure you go in and watch that video. That way your system is nice and clean before you install anything else in th into this particular system. Again, if this is your kind of thing where somebody goes through and cleans up systems, repairs them, and even mods them, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you're notified every time I post one of these videos. Let's get started. For this process, you're gonna need the RGB mod. As you can see, I got the one from a Voltar's shop. You're going to need a set of tools to open up the Nintendo 64. I'll go ahead and link these in the description below. You're going to need some wire and you're going to need some solder. You're going to need something to solder with. So I use this pin here and you're going to need some flux. You can use the paste or the no clean liquid kind. You're going to need some isopropyl alcohol. I use the 99% and also some cleaning tools like a toothbrush and some Q-tips. So here we have the Nintendo 64, same one that we worked on last time. Let's go ahead and take out the memory expansion door and use this tool here to pop up the actual little expansion card. Let's go ahead and flip this system over. Take this little extender door out. And we're going to use this, uh, the special screwdriver so we can go ahead and take off these Nintendo specialized screws. There's going to be six of them. There's going to be one in each corner and then one on the outside center areas. Once you take out all the screws, these little feet should come off. And we're going to go ahead and flip the system over so we can go ahead and take off the top here. The top shell should be removed easily now. And now we're going to focus on these four back screws that hold the power area together and also the AV area as well. I mentioned this last time, but go ahead and separate the screws so that way you don't lose which ones go where. These are all the screws we're going to focus on, the perimeter ones on the outside. 
Nintendo is infamous for always having a ton of screws in their system. So as you can see, I'm just focusing on the perimeter ones first. We're keeping them all together. There should be two on the back that are a little bit longer than the other ones. Just make sure you remember which ones those are. Next, we're going to focus on these two screws here that have a little bit of a gear to them. Again, as you can see at the top of the screen, I'm separating these. And then we're going to focus on these black ones next. All right, from there, we're left with these other screws here that hold the thermal blocks down. So let's go ahead and remove all of those. And then I'm going to change my bit to a smaller one so we can remove these tiny screws here for the memory expansion slot area. All right, perfect. Now we can go ahead and take out the heat sink. And we can actually lift the motherboard out of the shell. As you can see, there's this piece that falls off for the AV. Make sure you put that to the side and take off the bottom shell. And we're gonna focus on just this motherboard area. We're gonna go ahead and take off the bottom shielding. It comes off pretty easily. And we're gonna go ahead and flip this over and we're gonna go ahead and remove the top shielding next. Keep in mind when you remove the top shielding, all these little metal pieces start coming off as well. Not a big deal. Just make sure you keep those safe. And finally, we have our system exposed. So we're going to focus on the back area. So where the AV cable connects, there's going to be all these little pins. You can attach the actual RGB kit to it. You can just drop it in just like this. All of them are pretty much the same. It's just the way the function that's different. That's why I chose Voltars. The first thing I want to do is go ahead and straighten it up a little bit before I anchor it in. At this point, I'm not going to go point by point soldering it all the way through. I just want to add a little bit of solder to some of these points so I can go ahead and just anchor this exactly how I need it. So we'll take our solder and our solder gun here and just add a little bit of solder so it's anchored in. That should be good. This one should be good. Uh, I think I'm a little bit stuck here, so let's go ahead and add some heat so I can get out of here. Move on to the next one. And so at this point, this should be anchored exactly how I need it, so I can go ahead and start working on the rest of the points. And the finished product, so it should look something like this. Next up, we're going to go ahead and add some flux, and we're going to pre tin the blue, the green, the red, and the, the C sync area. That looks good. Oh, this is beautiful. All right, very nice. So this should be what it looks like before you start attaching wires. As you can see here, I already attached the wires to the R8, the R9, and the R10, and I color coded the wires. I haven't attached them to the actual physical kit yet. Uh, they're just kind of hanging out there. I kind of used some Kapton tape so I can route them exactly how I need them. And these wires are very small. These connections are all very small. So that's why I used a little bit of kept on tape to keep my work together. And I also got to use these tweezers so I can kind of pull these wires exactly where I need them. So I'm going to go ahead and do the blue first. And that looks like a pretty good connection. I can go a little bit further in, but uh, I'll work on that here in just a second. Let me move this red one out of the way and we'll do the green next. That looks pretty good. And lastly, we'll do the red one. That's a little off to the side. Let me go ahead and center this real quick. Ah, beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and do the blue one here and push that just a little bit further in. Perfect. Next up uh, on the R16, I went ahead and grabbed the black cable for the C-Sync. And I'm gonna go ahead and bend it because it was being a little bit unwieldy. That way I know it's going to fall exactly where I need it to. I'm going to go ahead and grab it and attach that to the last tin spot there. That looks pretty good. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take this middle shielding and worry about the right side here. This is where the AV cable goes. If you leave this the way it is now, it is going to hit the actual RGB kit or the RGB mod that we just installed. So what you can do is take a little some pliers and just go ahead and slowly and gently bend this until it is completely straight. It looks something like this. 
So once you bend that little tab, you are done with this mod. Congratulations, guys. All you had to do is reassemble the Nintendo 64. If you guys need a little bit of help with that, make sure you check out my previous video where I disassemble, clean up, and reassemble the Nintendo 64. Again, if this is your kind of thing where somebody picks up systems, cleans them up, repairs them if need be, and sometimes even mods them, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That way you're notified every time I post one of these videos. I'm going to leave you guys here with some footage i won't talk over it you guys can kind of base your own opinion on which one looks better i'll label it and everything for you i took footage of av footage or composite footage i'm sorry and also scart so that way you guys can decide which one looks better but also maybe you can decide whether or not this mod is something that you're interested in or even worth the trouble for i will let you know my personal opinion right off the bat i do think that av suffers more when it comes to text in games uh, but other than that it was really hard to tell unless you were super super close on some of these games so let me know what you guys think in the comments below i want to know what your thoughts are on this and whether or not you guys are deciding on doing this mod yourself let me know i'll see you guys later bye bye it's me mario hello dear mario please come to the castle Truly, Princess Toadstool. Peach. Who are you? What are you doing here? Hold your fire! I'm a human! Oh, sorry about that. I thought you were one of them. What's going on in this town? Hold on. I don't have a clue. By the time I noticed something was wrong, the entire city was infested with zombies. 